And now it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome our teacher and minister and pastor and practitioner to the podium so that he may prepare us for the anticipated workshop tomorrow. Please help me welcome our beloved Reverend John. Good morning, friends. Happy New Year, and happy new you. I see a lot of people who live in foreign and who are with us for our New Year's workshop, and it makes me just feel so warm. Besides, it's warmer here than in Toronto or New York or wherever you all abide uh, and reside. So welcome to our hearts and to this balmy January weather in beautiful Jamaica. Also wish to welcome those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. Happy New Year and Happy New You, wherever you may be on the face of the planet. Can I see a show of hands uh, of how many of you have ever ridden a merry-go-round? <laughs> Almost everybody. Yes. When I was, a, I was a child, I would spend all of my pocket money on the carousel. I didn't like the bumper cars perhaps because they reminded me too much of my mother Daisy's driving. <laughs> and I didn't like the Ferris wheel because I was scared of heights. So I would go on ride after ride on the merry-go-round until all my pocket money was done. So my encouragement today is titled, Get Off the Merry-Go-Round. Get Off the Merry-Go-Round. Emmett Fox, in his book, Find and Use Your Inner Power, makes the point that many folks experience life just like a ride on a merry-go-round. They climb upon a horse, and the carousel starts off slowly at first, very slowly. But then it picks up speed, doesn't it? And there's a lot of noise and whistles and music and you go round and round and up and down and up and down and round and round and then the ride slows down and it comes to a stop and you find yourself exactly where you began. <laughs> so like some of us here. Eh? Fox maintains that this is what happens when we rely upon willpower to solve our problems. I believe it also happens when we use sheer willpower to achieve our aims. We expend a great deal of energy, make a great deal of noise, but there is no progress, and we end up right where we started out. Sounds familiar? I have given a great deal of thought to how we can break this cycle. If you made resolutions at the beginning of 2014, and now, at the beginning of 2015, you're having to make the same resolutions again. You have been on a merry-go-round. Indeed, it may not have been so merry for you this past year. It might have been a sad go-round instead. And here you are again at the starting point. Fox hits the nail on the head when he says, and I quote, the person you are at the moment can only go round in the circle of your present problems, no matter how much noise he or she may make about it." Unquote. So friends, how do we get off the merry-go-round? In order for 2015 not to be a repeat of 2014, you must become a different person. And by that I mean a person with a different consciousness. A different consciousness cannot have last year's problems or issues because they don't belong to the new person. In our responsive reading this morning, we affirmed, and I quote, through the power of the Christ in me, I release the old, I behold the new. I want us to remember that when we speak about the Christ in this church, we're not talking about Jesus' last name. We're talking about the universal principle of your sonship or daughtership with God. 
So through the power of my sonship or daughtership with God in me, I release the old and I behold the new. So can we say that together? Let me repeat it. Through the power of the Christ in me, I release the old, I behold the new. Together? Through the power of the Christ in me, I release the old, I behold the new. So we have to do two things, friends. First, we must release the old so that we can take hold of the new. And second, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, most importantly, we must go into partnership with God. We must go into partnership with the divine. Emmett Fox shares an amusing anecdote of the days of the Old West, which carries an excellent metaphysical lesson on how we let go so that we can go into partnership with the divine. According to this story, a party of hunters, being called away from their camp by a sudden alarm, left the campfire unattended with a kettle of water boiling on it. Presently, an old bear crept out of the woods, attracted by the fire, and seeing the kettle with its lid dancing about on top, promptly seized it. Naturally, it burnt and scalded him badly. But instead of dropping it instantly, he proceeded to hug it tightly, this being the Bruins' only idea of defense. Of course, the tighter he hugged it, the more it burnt him. And of course, the more it burnt him, the tighter he hugged it, and so on in a vicious circle to the undoing of the hapless bear. As Fox points out, and I quote, this illustrates perfectly the way in which many people amplify their difficulties. They hug them to their bosoms by constantly rehearsing them to themselves and to others and to anyone who will listen, and by constantly dwelling upon them in every possible manner, instead of dropping them once and for all so the wound can have a chance to heal." Unquote. So assignment number one for this week and beyond. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica know that I always give. This week you have three. Well, it's really one in three parts. So the first part of your assignment is to watch whenever you catch yourself thinking about your grievances this coming week and beyond, say to yourself sternly, bear hugs kettle. <laughs> and then affirm, through the power of the Christ in me, I release the old and I behold the new. Let me get it. Through the power of the Christ in me, I release the old and I behold the new. You will be amazed, friends, at how quickly some long-standing wounds will disappear under this treatment. The other and perhaps most important step in getting off the merry-go-round of mistakes, the merry-go-round of broken resolutions and unattained dreams so that you can truly embody well-being in 2015 in every domain and aspect of your life is to take God for your partner. Now this is a serious partnership. Going into partnership with God is a sure way out of limitation of every kind and it requires no investment of money. Now if you are going into partnership with some high-powered successful financial magnet, before the agreement could be signed, what is known as due diligence would have to be done, yes? Tonight, do some due diligence on your life. This is the second part of your assignment. Without any sense of judgment or condemnation, I want you to take a close look at the assets that you bring to your partnership with Divine Mind. So take a clean sheet of paper, divide the sheet in two, and on the left-hand side, List all the wonderful talents, abilities, attributes, qualities, and even potentials that you possess. So that's on the left-hand side of your page. List all of your assets. On the right-hand side of the page, list your liabilities. Mm -hmm. Those habits that you possess, those beliefs, those behaviors and tendencies that are incompatible with your desire to fully embody well-being in 2015. Remember, don't judge or beat upon yourself. 
just make this inventory. On one side of the page, all that you bring to life. On the right hand side of the page, all that you want to. Doesn't work for you anymore. There are liabilities in your, in your quest for this divine partnership. I promise you, if you will really make God your partner in the business of your life this year, you will be amazed at the outstanding, indeed seemingly miraculous results that you will demonstrate. Let us affirm together, God is my senior partner in the business of living. Together, God is my senior partner in the business of I'm not at all convinced. You sound, as we say in Jamaica, fenke, fenke. Weak. Let me hear it. God is my senior partner in the business of living. Yes, friends, you will have to include God in every aspect, in the minutest as well as the greatest phases of your life this year if you want to succeed. And this is not some dibby dibby fly by night Ponzi scheme. This is a partnership with infinite wisdom. This is a partnership with unlimited power. This is a partnership with unfathomable love. This is a partnership unsur up with unsurpassed joy, indefatigable health, and inexhaustible wealth. Sounds good? It feels good? If you're ready, say yes. yes. No, you sound like you mean it. <laughs> Indeed, friends, it is a partnership that guarantees total well-being, not just in 2015, but for all of eternity. Tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., we will set our intentions for this divine partnership, and I will also share with you seven easy steps to forgiveness, which I know is a big challenge for many of us. You know, years ago, I took up the course in miracles, and I was going along perfectly till it came to forgiveness, and I spent three years I did the lesson over and over and over. And every time I thought I'd gotten rid of it, I was on the carousel. The carousel thing is it's a wonderful image, you know. I, I just loved carousel horses. And years ago, I was, I was working for a, an airline in another phase of my life. And I was at a, an antique fair it's somewhere in foreign, and there was this beautiful porcelain carousel horse, this figurine, you know. And so I bought it. I spent all of my travel allowance and bought it and ate nothing but hamburgers and chips for the next uh, week or so. And it was too big to go in the cabin, and being an executive of said airline, I had to set the example, so I had it packaged and shipped. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder where I got the habit of pursing my lips? It was in Smitherins when I got to Kingston. And I had just started coming to this church, and so I went to wail on our beloved Reverend Elmer's shoulder, who listened like this. <laughs> I wish I could do it. And when I was finished, she said, John, dear, you know, we should own our possessions. Our possessions shouldn't own us. I thought, wow. Good lesson, eh? So tomorrow evening, we're going to work and set our intentions for this divine partnership. But for today, the other part of your assignment, <laughs> the part three? Have I, got, have I given you two? Yes. Part three. Take a sheet of paper and recount all of your or another's transgressions. Just write down all of your or another's transgressions. You want more paper? Yes. <laughs> and write at the top, I fully and freely forgive, and then write the person's initials. Four, and make the list. Now, you may have a long list, but be sure to put I fully and freely forgive first. Bring this list tomorrow evening, along with the list of the liabilities from assignment number one, from your due diligence exercise. And at the appropriate time in tomorrow evening service, we will collect and burn these unwanted burdens. This is one of the most freeing things you can do for yourself. And believe me, it works. So friends, you cannot go into a life partnership with God if you are harboring resentment and hurt feelings. 
Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes this of forgiveness, and I quote, how often we condemn when we should forgive, how often censure when we might praise. What untold grief of heart might be relieved by words of cheer and forgiveness. The mind which condemns understands not the truth of being, and the heart which would shut the door of its bosom to one who is mistaken strangles its own life, closing its eyes to a greater vision. The biggest life is the one which includes the most. And Holmes says, not that we foster vice or place a premium upon wrongdoing, but that we understand the frailties of human nature and learn to overlook much. And I love what he says here. To him that loves much, much is forgiven. To him that loves much, much is forgiven, unquote. I haven't made any New Year resolutions for, your, for years because I found that setting my intentions in the spiritually charged atmosphere of our center here, I found that far more meaningful and rewarding. In fact, one year, Marguerite Rain, my dear friend, called it New Year's Revolutions, which I loved. Remember that? It was wonderful. But a colleague said to a spiritual living minister, Reverend Eileen Brownell, sent me a list of 10 spiritually literate New Year's resolutions, which she got from the email address of Bishop John Spong, who is one of my favorite not-so-Orthodox Orthodox priests. And I would like to share them with you. The resolutions are by uh, Frederick and Mary Ann Broussat, and if they resonate with you, a few copies will be available in our book room after the service, and I will also post them on our Facebook page for those of you who are Facebook savvy. So listen up, here are the 10 revolutions. One, I will live in the present moment. I will not obsess about the past or worry about the future. I wonder how many people are sitting right here today thinking what they have to do when they leave here. Mm -hmm. I will live in the present moment. Two, I will cultivate the art of making connections. I will pay attention to how my life is intimately related to all life on the planet. I'm making connections, make eye contact with the little boy at the traffic light who is coming to smear up your windshield with, with um, detergent water that spots up your duco. Make eye contact with him. Three, I will be thankful for all the blessings in my life. I will spell out my days with a grammar of gratitude. Isn't that lovely? I will spell out my days with a grammar of gratitude. If you had a gratitude journal this year, go through it tonight, assignment number four, part four and just look at all the blessings that have been heaped upon your head this year. Four, I will practice hospitality in a world where too often strangers are feared, enemies are hated, and the other is shunned. I will welcome guests and alien ideas with graciousness. Five, I will seek liberty and justice for all. I will work for a free, and a fair world. And I think that means that we have to make an effort to be free and fair ourselves. Six, I will add to the planet's fund of good will by practicing little acts of kindness, brief words of encouragement, and manifold expressions of courtesy. Seven, I will cultivate the skill of deep listening. I will remember that, that all things in the world want to be heard, as do the many voices inside of me. Eight, I will practice reverence for life by seeing the sacred in, with, and under all things of the world. Nine, I will give up trying to hide, deny, or escape from my own imperfections. I will listen to what my shadow side has to say to me, and I'll add, and I will put it on my due diligence uh, list of assets and liabilities this evening so that I can get rid of it once and for all. And 10, 
I will be willing to learn from the spiritual teachers all around me, however unlikely or unlike me they may be. As I say, there are a couple of a few sheets in the book room. So if you if it if you'd like, you can you can collect them from Reverend Anne after the service, or go onto Facebook and, and, and share them there. Finally, friends, whether you make resolutions or not, Fox recommends that, and I quote, if some condition in your life is not to your liking, change your mind about it and keep it changed. Now that's the big frog. If someone is displeasing to you, change your mind about him and keep it changed. If there is some sad memory that haunts you, change your mind about it and keep it changed. And Fox allows that it is keeping up of the change in thought that is really the challenge, isn't it? You can change your mind. I do it all the time. My dad used to say giving up smoking was easy. He did it every day. <laughs> so keeping your mind changed really requires some diligence and some effort. You know, I said to you, this partnership with God doesn't cost any money, but it really has a, a, a it really doesn't cost you anything financially, but you pay a price in spiritual coin because you have to dedicate your whole life, your whole beingness to this partnership. And so your final assignment, how many have I reached? <laughs> You're lucky. Change your mind about something particular some particular thing in your life. Do it today, don't wait for tomorrow's workshop. Do it today. Change your mind and keep it changed by constantly reminding yourself that you are in partnership with God and with God all things, my friends, are possible. Let us say I'm in partnership with God and with God all things are possible. Together, I'm in partnership with God and with God, all things are possible. To your neighbor say, you are in partnership with God, and with God, all things are possible. You are in partnership with God, and with God, all things are possible. You are in partnership with God, Reverend Michael, and with God, all things are possible. I got a note from Reverend Michael, this is very good. On your due diligence sheet, assets and liabilities, remember it's going to be divided in two. Assets on one side, liabilities on the other. Tear it in two tomorrow evening and just bring me the liabilities. Okay. Wow, anybody have any other questions? Anything else they want clarified? Wow, I'm not only handsome, I'm brilliant. Okay, so one, so help me now, let me see who was listening. No, I want to just go down them. One. Right, two. The other two diligence. Three. The forgiveness, and four. The Change your mind and keep, it, and keep it changed. But I also said, look at your gratitude journal and just look at all the blessings. I remember I had a gratitude jar that I brought this, this past year. Mine is full. I'm sorry, it's just wonderful. I went through it and just I'm overwhelmed by the goodness that God has given. Be here in time for six. I'm looking at people who always come at five past nine, ten past nine and a half past nine. Um, so if you want to stand up tomorrow evening, feel free. I'm changing my mind about you, and I'm keeping it changed. Because, friends, God, you have to help me. Friends, you are in partnership with God, and with God, all things are possible. Namaste.